Today, I'm going to help you pass the Security Plus exam. Let's go ahead and get straight into it. So if you never, ever, 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 ever seen me before, I'm Rob, a former U.S. Army Staff Sergeant, and I help people just like you get into amazing tech careers. So I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I was in the Army for quite some time, got all the way up to the rank of Staff Sergeant, went to Afghanistan, fought for your freedom, all that kind of stuff. And that's actually where I started my tech career. So right now, right now, I've helped over 15,000 people get into tech. So I have a bunch of industry certifications, 12 to be exact, Security Plus being one of them. And I help people just like you get Security Plus. So in this quick little training, we're going to go over some questions and some answers just to get you more familiar with the Security Plus exam and how some of the questions are structured. If you're interested in getting some more training just like this, you can subscribe to the channel below, hit that little bell notification to get more training like this. And also, this is the first entry point for the Zero to IT program, which is the first step for the Zero to IT Hero program. So if you're ready, let's get into it, y'all. So the Security Plus is a, a certification that can lead to a lot of opportunities, man, like a lot of opportunities. So when it comes to uh, cybersecurity, when it comes to just tech in general, Security Plus is one of those certifications that a lot of people go after because it opens up a lot of doors, a lot of opportunities. And the Security Plus specifically is a 90 question exam and you got 90 minutes to go ahead and knock out those uh, questions. So um, this particular certification is pretty difficult because it leaves you with a small window for error. So you need 750 out of 900. All the COMT exams are on a scale of 900. So that means you need to get around a little bit over 80% of the questions correct to actually get Security Plus uh, certified. So some of the domains covered are going to be just general security concepts, threats, vulnerabilities, and how to mitigate those threats and vulnerabilities, security architecture and design, security operations, and security program management and risk. And the questions we're going to go over at is going to actually hit each one of these domains. So they're all going to be scenario based and they're going to give you a pretty a moderate uh, level of difficulty. So if you get um, a lot of these questions um, correct, good for you. If you get them um, incorrect, uh, still good for you because at least you're you know trying, you showed up. But please understand, if you get these questions correct, it's because one, I'm reading them super slow. I'm making sure that you understand each question and each answer and I'm giving you the answer and I'm explaining why that is the answer. So this is going to be 15 questions and it's probably going to take us 30 to 45 minutes to get through these questions. On the real thing, you're going to get 90 questions, right? A maximum of 90 questions, you're going to only have 90 minutes. So uh, my students, I always encourage for them to be able to decipher these questions in 60 minutes. Holy shit. Hold on. 60 seconds. So. If it's taking you more than 60 seconds, that means that you may not have a good enough grasp on the material that you thought you had, right? Um, and then, like I said, wait till the end of the video because I'll actually uh, give you guys some stuff, uh, 4,000 questions, right? Uh, you can get 4,000 questions, uh, access to our, our practice test vault that'll help you. So enough about the exam, enough about me. If y'all ready to get into it, put your thinking cap on, Sit the hell down and shut the hell up and get ready to learn. All right, so the first question, here we go. A security team detects unusual outbound traffic from an internal database server. Further analysis reveals the traffic is encrypted and being sent to an unknown external IP address. The server has no internet facing services. What is most likely the cause? A, the database server was accidentally configured for remote access. B. An insider threat is manually extracting data. C, the server is infected with a command and control or C2 Trojan. 
D, a misconfigured firewall is allowing unintended outbound traffic. If it's your first time hanging out with me, what I do is I read the question, I read all the answers, and then I give you some time to go ahead and figure out what the answer is. As you can see at the top, this is from the threats, vulnerabilities, and attacks domain. And each question, I try to get it from a different domain just so you can kind of get a different feel. So I'll just go ahead and shut the hell up for a minute and let you guys uh, figure out what you think the answer is. Uh, full transparency, I'm waiting for uh, DoorDash uh, to come. So as soon as that order drops off, this goddamn video will be done. All right. So uh, hopefully you guys, that was enough time for you. So what did you get? What did you get? Let's see. So hopefully you got uh, the command and control Trojan. All right. So Trojan is a type of malware or malicious software that you think is good, but it's actually doing something bad. So C2 Trojans specifically allow attackers to maintain remote access and exfiltrate sensitive data. So that means that they don't even have to be where you are to get and extract that information. Uh, since the traffic is encrypted and persistent, it indicates the presence of malware communicating with an external C2 server. Now, another thing, uh, if you're preparing for Security Plus, if you're getting ready for Security Plus, I just want to tell you that, unfortunately, a lot of times the first question, right? Let's say this is the first question on the exam. If you get this first question wrong, it can be pretty rough, man. It can be pretty rough. So make sure that you prepare as much as possible because a lot of times we get the first question wrong from the data that I have from doing this from a long time. A lot of times we get the first question wrong. You may get um, some bad news when it comes to actually getting the certification because your confidence is going to be shot. You got the first damn question wrong. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the next one. A financial institution is experiencing a credential stuffing attack where attackers are using previously leaked usernames and passwords to gain access to accounts. What security control best prevents this? Is it enforcing complex password policies, implementing account lockouts after multiple failed login attempts, using rate limiting on logging attempts, or enforcing multi-factor authentication or MF? A. All right, let's see what you guys got. So hopefully you came up with multi-factor authentication, I meaning that you have to use multiple different things to authenticate and prove that you are who you say you are. So credential stuffing attacks exploit reuse credentials from data breaches. So whenever uh, a website gets hacked, whenever uh, breaches occur, unfortunately, that uh, information may end up on the dark web. The dark web is a place where people do illegal activities or uh, a place where people go to get information or things that is not readily available on uh, the regular internet. If you decide to peruse the dark web. Do not tell anybody that Rob told you to do that. I have no idea how to get to the dark web. I have never purchased anything off the dark web. And the dark web is a place that um, I have never been and will never go to. So uh, MFA just prevents unauthorized access, even if username and password has been compromised. Meaning that if somebody got uh, your username and password, they won't be able to authenticate through uh, the login code that may be sent to your cell phone device, or they may not be able to use uh, the fingerprint scanner because they don't have your finger, hopefully, right? Makes sense. All right, let's go to the next one. A penetration tester is attempting to exploit a known vulnerability in an organization's web application. The tester sends mail form SQL queries in the URL parameters and successfully extracts customer data from the back end database. What type of attack is this? Is it a cross site scripting? SQL injection? Local file inclusion? 
server side request forgery. You ready? Here we go. So for this, it's going to be SQL injection. So SQL is a coding language. It's a, a language that can be uh, manipulated. So when you inject uh, malicious code or anything that's not supposed to be in there, it pretty much manipulates that language and it actually manipulates the library that the uh, SQL looks for and queries and asks for stuff from, right? So SQL injection manipulates SQL queries through input fields to access unauthorized data. The ability to extract customer data confirms the application is vulnerable. So it's gonna be from the security architecture and design domain. You ready? Let's go. An organization wants to implement a security solution that allows zero trust access to internal resources based on user identity, device health, and real-time behavior analysis. Which solution should they deploy? A, intrusion detection system. B, next generation firewall. C, zero trust network access. Or D, web application firewall. You ready? Let's go. So the answer for that is zero trust network access. So zero trust um, network access basically means that access control is based on identity, device posture, and continuous authentication. So identity, who you are, device posture, where is it at, and what is the security posture of that device? Right. So is it running in a sandbox? Is it put in a lockbox? Is it remote? Does it only stay on site? And continuous authentication means that maybe every 30 minutes, every hour, every day, you have to authenticate again. So you won't have continuous access unless you authenticate over and over and over again. So when you have that, it just means that we don't trust you at all zero trust so you have to continuously authenticate it is uh, annoying it's cumbersome but it is very very effective in making sure that whoever is using that device or whoever's on the network at that time whoever's accessing that software is who they say they are so it just ensures that no one is trusted by default no matter who they are right so that's pretty simple zero trust is uh, pretty much how i run uh, my life as well. Don't trust anybody. Uh, you know, nobody is trusted by default. Right. So that's pretty much um, how uh, zero trust networks work. So this one question is going to be from the uh, security and access control domain of Security Plus. A company is migrating critical workloads to the cloud and needs to ensure that data remains encrypted both at rest and in transit. Which combination of technology should they implement? A, TLS for encryption and transit and AES 256 or 256 for encryption at rest. B, VPN for encryption and transit and SSL for encryption at rest. C, tokenization for encryption and transit and hashing for encryption at rest. D, SSH for encryption and transit and ECC for encryption at rest. So this question, at least in the answer portion, was really, really uh, acronym heavy. If you've got to this point, uh, trying to take security plus and you aren't really familiar with acronyms, I would advise that you do not start with security plus. I actually advise nobody starts with security plus as their first certification, but you're grown. You can do what the fuck you want to do. If you decide you want to go for security plus first you can, but just fully understand that you need to uh, be really, really like, this is like elementary stuff. If you like acronyms are tripping you up, this probably isn't the best place to start.
All right, you ready? So uh, TLS or transport layer security encryption and transit and AES 256 or 256, this is the uh, bit amount for encryption at rest would be the answer for this. So transport layer security encrypts data in transit while the AES or advanced encryption standard is the industry standard for encrypting data at rest or data that is not in transit. So we've been rocking out for a couple questions and the only thing I ask is that you like this video and comment uh, what you're actually going after. Are you going after Security Plus? Do you have our certifications? This is your first certification. And if you want me to make more videos like this, do you want me to focus on Security Plus? Or do you want me to focus on another certification? Another question you maybe ask yourself is where the hell did these questions come from? I myself or Rob created all of these questions. And like I said at the top of the video, if you want um, access to uh, questions just like this, over 4,000 questions just like this, just to make sure that you are ready for the actual exam, you can click the link in the description and get um, access to our practice test vault.